Hi everyone, I'm Sylvolf. I hope this is recording because I had a bit of a problem trying to get all these things to work. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be talking about character creation and development for creating your own characters. I thought I'd try something a bit new and help those people who have a bit of a problem with the creative process. Now, we've got a couple of shout outs. They go to your bro 91 and his 11 Furbies, and also happy birthday to Skated Up with Mr. Faggot and Houdini. It must, might be Mr. Fagot and Houdini, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Anyway, so, what you see here is inspiration for one of my main characters, his name is Dahl. Now, let's start at the beginning. So, you want to create a character, and, you know, you're not quite sure where to start. Now, inspiration can come from a variety of places. You might see something and think, oh, I could do a character based off that. Or you might kind of think, I need inspiration for a character. Now, the character I'm talking about here is a punk. And he's one of my main characters at the moment, and his name is Dahl, like I said before. And so he's a human. Now, looking at the people in our lives and things like that helps a lot with creating a human character. Um, humans can be quite easy to create as a new original character or they can be quite hard because if you're creating an animal character you're looking mostly at personality um, where he might live or whatever but with a human you're thinking about personality where he lives what's his job what's his friends relations parents history what school do you go to how deep do you want this character development to go so I watch a variety of things on Netflix and one of them is Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. And in this one, there was a character you see on the left. His name's Martin. And he was one of, I can't remember. There was three of them. They call themselves the Terrible Three or something like that. It was a while ago. But I really liked the sort of black and white style of his facial hair and the hair on his head. And his personality was quite good. And I thought, that's kind of cool. So I liked him as a character. Now I'm also a fan of Stranger Things, and in season two of Stranger Things, Eleven runs off and finds a group of people, one of whom is the punk you see on the right. I'm not sure what his name was, but he was quite cool, he had really tall hair, and uh, I liked him, again, as a character. Now, there's a song I like to listen to that I've listened to since I was about 14 years old, called Prime Mover, and it's by a band called Zodiac Mind Warp and The Love Reaction. They have been going for over 30 years. Yes, they're still going. No, you haven't heard of them. But they're a good band. It's a good song. It was the most popular song they did. And the guy who sings it, over the years, I've often had like a thing in my head imagining a character of mine singing it. So with these two people you see here and that song, the original inspiration for my character Dahl started to take shape. So I drew up a... Um, like a concept, which you can see here. So I did a rough picture of what I thought he'd look like. As you can see, his hair and that is based a little bit off Martin's, but also based off the other guy too with its style. Um, the tattoos and stuff I just made up. He's got a star there um, in the middle, and he's got one on his head and a couple of piercings here on his eyebrow and his nose and things like that. Um, so this was the first incredibly terrible picture I drew of him. Now, around him, I decided to put various things about him. Now, this is a good idea. When creating a character, you want to put little bits and, things, bits and pieces about their personality and who they are, other stuff about them. So I put that he's Scottish but lives in America. So that's something about his history. He's got heterochromic eyes, which means they're two different colours. Um, his hairstyle is naturally black, but he bleaches it. As he ages, his bleached highlights become natural, grey or silver. He probably has pierced nipples. You never know. Actually, he does. And I put various studs, stubble, eyebrow piercings, and his tattoo. That's on the left side only. His age, and various other things like that. I'm not going to read it all. Um, I also put that he vapes. He's got a box mod. Because my dad vapes. So with these various things, I gained inspiration from other things around me. For example, like I just said, my dad vapes. So why not have Dahl vaping? I actually vape as well, although I don't vape nicotine. Um, the tattoos. I've got a lot of friends who have tattoos. 
that star tattoo is quite a popular one. Um, I think I've probably got a friend that has one of those. I thought I'd do painted nails. I've got a friend who's in a rock band. He paints his nails. Um, and, you know, general things like he wears a black jacket and he's got jeans and he's got his own custom belt buckle and how his shoes look and everything. And he's got spikes on his shoes for kicking crotches. Maybe he likes to fight. And the more things I wrote about him, the more things I had ideas for. And he started, in the end, to write himself. Because when you feel really inspired while creating a character, they can actually just write themselves. It's a really weird thing. And some of you who are artists or writers may have actually experienced this yourselves. Um, I had another character a few years ago who's a good example, Rictus Rinctus, who was an alien bug. And he wrote himself. I have a whole entire folder of artwork I've done of him. He's got a whole backstory. He's got a whole bio which you can read on DeviantArt. I made him a Twitter. He swears a lot on it. I don't really use it anymore. I probably should. And he's also turned 10 years old last year. So I've had him for 10 years. So good characters stick around. That's another important thing to know. If you make a character you're really proud of, who's really well developed or you really connect with, you'll keep that character around for several years. Maybe even forever. Um, I also put at the bottom, he drives a beat up silver Cadillac with a custom, uh, customised design on the hood. And there's his theme song, Prime Mover, as I talked before about that, and he can't keep a job. So you've got all that. So then, after you've done the general concepts, you've had all the uh, inspiration from these things, you can do up a reference sheet. So here is his reference sheet. Now a good reference sheet, as some of you probably know, you show various sides of the character. So we've got a bo full body shot here and we've got one without his shirt on. He's got a massive scar going down there. You can see some of his tattoos. You've got some various expressions so you can see what either side of his head looks like because his tattoos are different on either side and some accessories that might go with him. There's his car with its customised hood and his vape, uh, vape mod and he's also got tattoos on his hands there as well. And I've put even more things around him. He's got a vicious scar he got from being bottled in a bar brawl. Um, studs on the back of his jacket. And I've sort of built on what I put on the original concept. Some characters require quite a few concepts. Others, I mean, I tend, I not, I don't really draw that much concept art for mine. I tend to just get it right first time, I'm happy with it, bang, there you go, done. Which is good in some ways, but bad in others. But you can always build on the character. After all, it's your character. If you want your character to age, like Dahl, he is in his late 30s. This year, he actually turns 39, I think, or 40. Um, because he was born in 1980, so I think he turns 40 this year. He, he's not happy about being old. And, you know, you can, you can build on these things. Now, the various design aspects of him as I said before, came from people around me. I've got friends with similar piercings. I've got a friend with similar tattoos. His heterochromic eyes came from... Uh, I've got a friend called Chris, and he has similar coloured eyes, but it's very slight. One is hazel, one is green. You only notice when you're talking to him and actually looking him in the face, but he does have these different coloured eyes. So it's, it's quite easy. It comes together quite well when you draw inspiration from the world around you and I think that real world inspiration is really important not just for character creation and development but also for example if you're drawing someone or something the best thing to reference from as everyone knows or should know is a photograph so again you're drawing from real world real life references so now you've done your character's reference sheet and a massive great big bio at the bottom you can draw other pictures of him Here's another picture I did. Now this one was me experimenting with painting because I haven't done digital painting before so I did him sitting on the roof of his house and because he's that well developed he actually has his own house. It's like a ranch house. It's in California. He graffitis it all the time. So there's all the graffiti. You know when he's a bit bored and stuff he graffitis his house and it's sort of built on that. Now through all of this, and also a bit of personal writing I did, 
which really helps by the way if you can role play your character or if you can write your character it really helps develop them even further i've developed several characters by way of role play or just writing stories about them i mean i went through some horrible horrible stuff back in uh, 2018 like everything collapsed around me and what i did was i put my pain into doll and i wrote the story from his perspective so everything that happened to me was happening to him and i know it sounds weird but it really helped me develop him better so you've got another picture of him here in a car that's him in his car and i took a photograph of just the street in california to put in the background and i actually based this from a scene in a movie where uh, the guy was sitting just like this in a car and i thought hey that would be cool to draw dial in that pose so i did and there he is so like i said drawing inspiration from the world around you doing bullet points for certain parts of the character's personality and various other aspects uh, it's also important on my website silverwolfstudios.co.uk dial has a page which you can go and view and you can read his bio how old he was when he got certain tattoos this is how deeply this development has, has actually come with him it's quite unusual for me to do this but i felt very inspired so it's pretty much year to year what happened to him in each year and how old he was for, for example when he got the scar so from being inspired originally by a couple of characters from stuff i saw on tv it's kind of spiraled into my own character and it's it's really good and i think because he was inspired by things that existed already but i didn't rip anything off i didn't copy anything because if you want to make your own character your own don't copy other people it's just not really worth it and it'll annoy people um make it your own by drawing inspiration from several places you know so i've mixed and matched things instead of outright copying character for example one person i know has taken a character a disney character and they have ripped the character off completely so they're using that character and they've given it pointy teeth and wings it's the same thing they've changed its personality and made it evil but it looks exactly the same but with pointy teeth and wings don't do that that is rubbish you know uh be more creative than that it's much better um so going for the future of dal i'm not sure if i'm going to write a story about him or whether he's just you know something fun to do you don't have to do things with all your characters but when it comes to writing books and things like that which i'll cover in a future video um the more developed a character is the easier they are to write now i could you could ask me anything about dal and i can answer instantly i can ramble on about it as though he's a real person which means that i've really gone to town with how much i've developed him uh so real well done characters um they are like that you know you should be able to know every every aspect of them inside and out it doesn't matter if you don't again it's just down to you if you want to uh, develop a character more you can if you want to leave it by the wayside you can but these are my tips if you want to create a strong character i hope this video helped you not just for artwork but drawing or just role plays anything really um on a side note no i don't role play anymore and the reason i stopped role playing was because other people just would lose interest and i'd just be left and so no i do my own creative writing now um i can even answer like you know those online questionnaires where you can get what's your name what's your favorite color uh what is this what is that how old were you when whatever happened you know you get them on facebook or something and there's like 50 questions and you answer them all I can answer them as Dahl and have a good time doing it because I know how he'd reply. Um, so you could do something like that for your characters, get into their minds and hmm, what would they do, what would that be and how would that go. Anyway, I've probably rambled long enough now. I didn't want to make this boring. Um, so I've just, I've just put down a few things that I thought people might find useful since you guys wanted me to do more art related videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to buy any of my Silver Herbie merchandise, the links are in the description as always. 
Um, I'll put some related videos at the bottom of this one as well. And good luck with your characters. Have fun creating. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now. This is Silver signing off.